Um, hi everyone, I'm Josh Larson. Um, the title of my presentation is Eternal Marriage and Plural Marriage. Um, this is going to be very engaging for me talking because I don't know how to do that on the computer. It's in my phone. Um, I said do eternal marriage and plural marriage, plural marriage because I didn't really know a whole lot about it until we did the module talk about it. And I thought it was kind of cool. It's definitely an overlooked part of like church history that's interesting to learn about. Um, the related unit of study I did, um, no, I mean, sorry, the major concept I did was ordinances required for exaltation and eternal increase because, um, there's a lot of things that come with like eternal marriage that are required for exaltation. Um, what type of doctrine is this? I believe this is supporting doctrine because, um, polygamy is definitely not around at least not in our church anymore. So it's timely, but eternal marriage is still around today, obviously, and is definitely supported by the church. And yeah, it's, and it's like essential part of our church. Um, so my two scholarly sources were plural marriage in Nauvoo and Kirtland and teachings about the family. Um, what plural marriage in Nauvoo and Kirtland is about, it's in the title. It gives a history, um, gives a history about, um, the beginnings of plural marriage in the church and how it was kind of like, Joseph Smith knew about the doctrine for a little bit, but he didn't really practice it until an angel with a sword literally showed up to him. And I thought that was really cool. I don't know why. Um, but it's like an interesting fact. He didn't, he didn't do that until he literally, the angel threatened him with destruction. And so it just kind of gives a, um, that source kind of gives a background on the history of it all. And teach him about the family. And I have that written down here. Um, that, this kind of ties in with eternal marriage. It's how families on earth are extensions of the family of God. And that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God. And um, families concealed in the temple for forever. And that family is eternal. And that's why family is so important. Um, so my pro talks by prophet. The first one, prophetic talks. I don't think this guy was a prophet. but um, It's Eternal Marriage by F. Burton Howard. And there's one quote that... I really liked um, it's if you want uh, something to last forever you treat it differently it becomes special because you have made it so um, I think that's in context of eternal marriage and I love that because we should treat our eternal marriage with like especially because that's like your life partner um, yeah, and the second second talk is God Will Not Be Mocked by uh, Spencer W. Kimball. There's one part of it that talks about um, plural marriage, and it's, we warn you against the so-called polygamy cult, which would lead you astray. Remember, the Lord brought an end to this program many decades ago through a prophet who proclaimed the revelation to the world. People are abroad. Uh, will deceive you and bring you much sorrow and remorse. Have nothing to do with those who would lead you astray. It is wrong and sinful to ignore the Lord when he speaks. He has spoken strongly and conclusively. So he kind of addresses the elephant in the room of the Mormon church, which is the history of polygamy. And that it is, he shuts down any rumor that it is at all associated with the church uh, in the modern days. And says, um, if you have any reason, like, It'll lead you astray. And um, it says in the end, it is wrong symbol to ignore the Lord when he speaks. This also applies to like the history of it. Like back then it was definitely frowned upon by like socially in the world. Um, but we need to, uh, but Joseph did it anyways. And he followed uh, what God told him to do. And two related DNC sections and verses DNC 132 talks about 
plague me and stuff like that. I verily thus saith the Lord unto you, my servant Joseph, that inasmuch as you have inquired of my hand to know and understand, wherein I, the Lord, justified my servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as also Moses, David, and Solomon, my servants, as touching the principle and doctrine of their having many wives and, con and concubines. And he's basically saying, this is doctrine which I have. Um, therefore, and sorry, the next one is, also, DNC 132, verse 15, Therefore, if a man marry him a wife in the world, he may marry her not by me nor by my word, he, and he cov covenant with her, so as long as he's in the world, and she with him. And it's basically, uh, this verse talks about, like, how it needs to be an eternal marriage for it to be eternal. Um, the Joseph Smith papers quote, um, this is a quote on believe me, the history of it, by December 1842, the end of the first year covered in these journals, Joseph Smith had explained the doctrine of plural marriage to a few of his close, closest associates and his proxy himself. Um, and two key concepts from this unit you know, that I took away is marriage is central for Heavenly Father's plan because without marriage, there's no family and that marriage is ordained of God. And plural marriage was a commandment of God given to Joseph Smith to expand the church to multiply and replenish the earth and to restore all things. And one key takeaway I got from this was no matter how wrong or how much we dislike the commandment, if it comes from God, we need to do it. And that marriage is a central part of Heavenly Father's plan because of what comes after it, which is family. And family is very important for this life and the life after, and all that starts with marriage. And, yep. Thanks, guys.